Hi guys and welcome to another Divi video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we're going to create this sort of floating contact form button here that when you actually click on it, it pops up a contact form. That's a great little feature to have on your site. And to do this today we're using the, the Divi theme obviously and the fantastic Divi Supreme Modules plugin. Okay, so let's get started. First thing I want to do is enable the Visual Builder. And let's go down and actually delete our little button there. Now because we've got a fixed position, the easiest way to work with this is in wireframe mode. So if you go down to your little purple button, hit the little wireframe icon on the left hand side there. And I'll just delete the little blurb module that we created there. back to desktop view and you'll see that it's gone. Okay, first thing we need to do is create a contact form, the contact form that we actually want to pop up. So you can do that anywhere. I'll just create a new row. I'll just give it a single column and put a simple contact form in there. I won't spend too much time styling this today. That's absolutely fine. Setting wise, you can give it a title if you want. And what you want the submit button to say. Success message, you can say your message has been sent or we will be in contact shortly, something like that. Just to let them know that the message has been sent. I'll just simply put in that. Now the important one is the email. This is where you want it sent. So you want to put your email address in there or the email um, that you want it to be sent to. Don't need a re redirect. It's already got a little capture in there so we don't need spam protection or anything like that. Let's give it a quick background. I'll just give it a simple color. a little bright actually that's fine and I'll give it a bit of spacing all around and we're pretty much done I'll put that title in the middle as well I'll go to the design and we'll give it a bit of spacing all around let's give it 30 pixels just put in the 30 it'll put in the pics hit the chain it'll do the opposite side for you similar with the left and right over here there we go I'm pretty happy with that we'll call that done just want to edit the title there. When you hover over an element, a little paintbrush, a little blue circle with a paintbrush in it will appear. If you click on that, it'll take you straight to that element so you can customize it. I'm going to make it semi-bold and I'm going to put it in the middle. There we go. Great. So there's our contact form. Let's save that. Now the important bit we've got to save it to our library. To do that, just hover over the module tab itself, dark one for a module, green one for a row, and blue one for a section. We want the dark one. We want to go to the little circular icon right there. Left click, say save module to library. And I'll just say contact pop up. Save it to the library. Great, we're done. We can delete this whole thing now. It's already in our library and we only want it to appear when, when we click that little pop-up button that we're going to make. Okay, so on to the pop-up button. Now, like I said, we're using Divi Supreme modules for this. There's a link below the video. Let's go back to our dashboard. And if you click on Divi Supreme Pro, once you've got it installed, and you will need to use the Pro version for this, you have to make sure that you've got Enable Divi Pop-Up switched to on. So it's purple like this. Once you do that, just save your changes. If you don't do this, the pop-up won't work, but uh, it's a fantastic feature. So just click that up to on and save your changes. Now let's build our little button. Okay, for this I'm just going to use a blurb module. It doesn't matter where we build it. So I'll add new module. 
I'll use a blurb purely for the icon. Title, contact us or whatever. Don't want anything in the content area, so I'm going to get rid of all of that. I want to use an icon instead of an image. So I'm going to image and icon tab, flip the switch to yes, and choose whatever icon you want. Elegant Themes has got a whole load to choose from right here. I guess I want a little envelope or a send type icon. There's a, that's the one we used before, I think. There it is right there. And there's our title. Doesn't look too interesting. That's okay. We're going to fix it. Now let's give it a background. I'm going to start it off um, with a blue background. There we go. Now let's go to our design and start designing this thing the way we want. Image and icon. Well, I want it to be white. And I actually want it to be on the left hand side on the left of the contact us there. So image icon placement. Switch that to le left. Okay, icon font size. Well, I'm going to use that because I want it to be a little bit bigger. Just set it to where you want it. Whatever works for you. Now the title text, which is our contact us. Let's go in there. And again, you can just hit the little paint brush and it'll take you straight to the H4 in this case. Let's make that semi bold. Let's capitalize it make it white. I want it to be sort of in line with our little icon there. So let's change the, the line height and bring it down a little bit. This will sort of get it to where we want it. Something like that. Just so it's kind of in the middle of the icon. It doesn't matter about the space either side because we're going to be using height and width on this particular module. Great, so we got that where we want it. Let's just add a bit of padding. Just left and right a little bit. Um, I guess we'll use a bit of top and bottom. Let's say 15 pixels all round. Actually, that's way too much. Let's say 10 pixels all round. Like I say, we're going to be using um, height and width. So it really doesn't matter too much about these. That's great. And we'll, we'll give it some rounded corners. We might decide to give it some more padding if that icon doesn't fit correctly. I'm going to get 50 pixels, which will make it kind of pill shaped. There we go. Yeah. So I want a bit more padding on the left hand side just to bring that one in. Let's go back up to our spacing and let's make our left and right let's say 20 see if that works do it a little bit more still let's make it 30. there we go that's going to work and like i say it's not quite in the middle there but we're going to use height and width okay so we got the structure kind of built there now i want it to change color on hover and i want that to disappear until we hover on it so let's go back to our content the background we chose our background color of blue but when we hover I want it to be purple so we go background the dark background here the little arrow regular state which is desktop state when there isn't a mouse over it leave as blue hover I'm gonna make that purple now the time it takes to change from blue to purple by default is 300 milliseconds or mine will take a little bit longer maybe a second so let's go to advance we'll go to down to transitions and just slide the duration up to whatever you think is good. And like, like I say, I want mine to be about a, a second or a thousand milliseconds. Speed curve is the way it actually bounces in and out. I like the ease in and out because it sort of starts off slow, speeds up, then goes back the other way. So that's good. Right, now let's get our height and width sorted out. So back to the design tab and we'll go down to sizing. Let's do the height first. We got the width there. Now I want to do this in pixels. So I don't know. We'll try 75 pixels. 
that's not bad that is almost bang on in fact I'm gonna leave that just like that now width wise when we're not hovering on it content width and here's the width so I hit the little arrow again to bring up a hover and a desktop state switch to desktop state on the desktop state let's try 100 pixels. I don't know if that's going to be enough we actually want the width itself on the desktop to be 100 not quite not quite say 120 that's okay and we've got that little bit of bleed in there from the title text right there I'm just taking this down till it's more sort of equal both sides something like that adjust yours how you wish now when it hovers I want to see the whole thing so let's try 250 that's going to work fine great so when we're not hovering on it it's going to be that width when we are hovering over it it's going to be that width that's great now we want to make that little C or the title disappear and just bring it back when we're hovering over it. I'm going to write a little bit of custom CSS to do this and I'll put it below the video. So I'm going to go to the advanced tab, I'm going to go to custom CSS, I'm going to roll on down and you'll find a little blurb title box here. I'm going to say opacity, which is kind of see throughness if you like, O P A C I T Y colon zero and as you can see it's disappeared there but I want to be able to see it when somebody hovers over it so again right where it says blurb title there hover over get your little arrow up for the hover state I'm going to write in opacity colon one which is full and as you can see it's back so we've got that when we're hovering over it. If I go back to desktop, it goes back to that. Great. So we're almost done with this. Now we want to put it, we don't want it to be just sitting under this module. We want it to put it somewhere where they scroll the site, it stays there, floating in other words. So to do that, while we're on the advanced tab, we can close up our custom CSS go down to position now default is the default funnily enough we want it to be fixed in other words stay where it's put all the time now it's thrown it up to the top left there let's say let's put it in the middle on the right right there you've got these little buttons and you can adjust it if you want to offset it uh, horizontally you can put it up or down or, or left or right and you've got a vertical one if you put it top and bottom you've got a vertical offset you can bring it down or or left or however you want it so it, it works for you so let's put it back where it was in the middle there 25 picks it's a little too far out let's say 10 picks there we go you can even have it zero picks it'd be touching the side but that that works for me okay great now we want to make it click and bring our contact form up now to do that don't forget we did this step here with the Divi Supreme modules we turn this switch on because we've turned this switch on we can now go to visibility let's just close up position and go to visibility if we scroll down a little bit you've now got a switch that says users pop-up great let's switch that to on pop-up type well we saved it as a layout so that's correct now before we can choose our contact form we need to refresh this page because we saved it to our library but we haven't refreshed the page since then so let's save our changes save the page changes at the bottom here once they're saved 
we can refresh the page and let's go back in our module again if you have trouble getting to it hit the little purple button because it's fixed position now there's the blurb module we need to go back in there we can switch it back to desktop now back to our advanced tab down to visibility we've still got our switch on pop-up type is a layout now we should be able to see it in our library there it is contact pop-up and we want it to trigger on the module which is this is our module so that's absolutely fine you can choose where the close pop-up triggers are you can auto close it by using a timer on it if it's a sort of welcome message or something like that you can change the animation and the exit animation choose where the pop-up pops up center is fine for me you can have it left right wherever you want um, but center is perfect for me position absolute yet yeah, we want it to stay even if they're scrolling or trying to scroll when it's up use full width no you can set the width that's fine for me that's going to work on most mobile devices too so I'm not going to close anything else on here it's got a close button and by default they're using the X icon there which is pretty standard but you can choose whatever you want and change the button backgrounds and colors and what have you so I'm happy with that I don't want to change anything else let's save that save our page changes and let's see what we've got let's exit the visual builder so there we go there's our little button when I hover over it it grows and shows us that contact us when I click on it there's our little contact form that we built and they can fill it in and send it off and there's a little close icon so that's a nice little feature to add to your site and like I say we've been using the fantastic Divi Supreme modules to do this today so I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful if you have please ring the bell give it a thumbs up share comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.